Throwback Thursday, we're going to talk about a little interesting topic, or a topic that I find interesting anyway. Nowadays, when you want to listen to just one song, you might go on YouTube, you might go on Spotify, you might pop over to your Apple Music subscription, or your... what else do people subscribe to? Google Play Music doesn't exist anymore, does it? Not that one. Uh, you might even pop over to Bandcamp and, and let that... Um, guide you towards some fantastic independent artist and you can listen to a few songs on there. Um, whatever the case, you're probably going on the internet to do it. Um, but you see, before that, well, your choices were somewhat limited. Um, if you wanted to listen to one song, well, you could grab the album that song was on and, well, I mean, the, this this album could not be any more black. How much more black could it be? The answer is none. None more black. Um, <clears throat> you would grab the album and you would have to listen to all of the songs on the particular side of the album. So it, each album has two sides. Uh, and that wasn't really a very good demonstration, but you get the idea. You'd stick a side of the album on and, well, you'd have to listen to them all unless you knew exactly where on the record... Gosh, I'm doing a, a right pig's ear of this where on the record that song starts and ends and then you could place the needle on that particular bit and go all right okay i'll listen to that um but that wasn't really feasible uh chances are if you were grabbing one of these you're listening to the whole album but there was another option what if you wanted to literally just listen to a singular song maybe you'd get a single this is a small <clears throat> small record with a dodgy flipping Sleeve? Look, it's coming out the bottom. Dreadful. Well, the thing is, this is a single. So this is one record, and it is extremely thin and cheap. And that's it. This is just a song. There's one song on here. Um, it's a 45 RPM. Uh, so it plays a bit faster than uh, than your, your average 33 RPM LP. Um Sometimes these included more than one song, um, and they were usually referred to in that case as EPs, or extended plays, um, but this is not an EP. I'm not exactly sure what kind of play this is, I've always known it was just a single. Um, and yeah, you put it on and you get a song, and then on the other side you get another song. So the interesting thing, uh, what's actually on the other side of this? Oh, there's actually two songs on side B. Interesting. Uh, but side A is... Oh! I kind of forget that this is from a, from a film. Um, anyway, well, <laughs> let's continue with the thought. There are three songs on here, so I guess this could be an, an EP under some jurisdictions. But the point is, it's it's a single song. So you stick it on, you listen to the song, bosh, there's your song. You might fancy another one. So, well, you'd grab... I'm, Got nothing but Who records here, you'd grab another one, and uh, there you go, there's another Who record, and you'd stick that on, and you could listen to Had Enough uh, from the album Who Are You by The Who. And then you might fancy another Who song, <laughs> and so you grab another single, and it's uh, Squeezebox by The Who, or Success Story. Here's the thing, that's side A. You're buying a single, and chances are you're buying it for the side A. And in many, many cases, as as I understand it, I wasn't alive when this was new. Um, by the time I was born and, and cognizant enough to listen to music, well, the single had been dead and buried. But um, my understanding is that when you bought a single, you were buying it for side A, and chances are, 90% of the time, you would just listen to side A. Some people didn't even bother with the B side, because you'd have things like, uh... Dogs Part 2. I don't even know where that's from. Which is, would you believe it, The Who. <laughs> this is, uh... This is Pinball Wizard on one side, as you can see from this fantastic homemade sleeve, and uh, Dogs Part 2 on the other side. It's been taped up, it's made of cling film or something, and yeah, somebody just made this sleeve for the record to go in. How good's that? Um, <clears throat> and so, bands would do interesting things with the side Bs. 
the the A side would be the standard sort of fare that you would expect from the band, but the B side, well, nobody listened to that, so you could just do what you wanted with it. Um, and some of Rod Stewart's most famous hits, particularly Maggie May, that was a B side originally, and so it was quite mind blowing when that became such a big song. Um, but yeah, people did all sorts with the B-sides. Status Quo is an interesting example, because if you know Status Quo, well, the whole shtick of the band is that every song sounds the stinking same, and that's the whole point. But on the B-sides, again, as I understand it, this is uh, not something I've verified myself, but the B-sides are, according to Quo fans, the best work they've ever done, because there's something different. They do different stuff with the B-sides. Um, there are a lot of artists who did, like, instrumentals with the B-sides, or different genres with the B-sides, or sometimes they do, um, like, novelty stuff um, with the B-side. In fact, a lot of novelty records, not that you get those much anymore, they might have some sort of uh, novelty track on the A side and then some sort of like bit of a stand-up set on the B side, I think. Yeah. Um, so, with, with a nice collection of singles, um, you could have a decent array of music. Um, and you'd kind of... Uh, What's 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 on the B side of this? Bonnie, I've never heard. Of, see, I've never heard of that, and I'm you know I'm quite au fait with Super Trump. Uh, what's on the other side of this? This is uh, the Rolling Stones, and we've got it's all over now. The uh, Rolling Stones you can take them or leave them. Really, I've heard of that one by Mark Mike Oldfield, RGA. Uh, what's on the Flowers in the Rain B side? Uh, that would be Move. Okay, very good. By the move, what, a, what an inventive title! And then we've got you know there's 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 all sorts a lot of um, a lot of singles actually. Uh, this isn't a particularly good example because the sleeves kind of ripped, but they would be promotions for the upcoming album, and sometimes would even include exclusive songs that you wouldn't find on the album. So this one is Lap of Luxury and Astronomy. Um, as much of a tall fan as I am, I've not really um, set foot in the later 80s stuff and onwards because... Um, but this one was produced to promote the album Under Wraps, um, which was one of the latter-day albums, uh, which was also available on cassette back in the mid to late 80s. Um, what's this one? Why... Uh... Oh, actually, this is it. This is a good example because, um, well, the thing with singles is that they were very cheaply produced, and uh, here's a great thing that they always did with them. And to this day, I don't really understand. Um, you see, all record players, they uh, if you've never seen one, they they're kind of just like a big circular bed, and there's a spindle in the middle, and you stick your record on the spindle, and then put a, a stylus over it that's on an, a, on a big arm. You probably can picture that um even if you've never seen a record player you may have seen like pictures of or clip art of or illustrations of etc etc and the spindle is always the same size and so on an lp oops you can see that there's a hole in the middle and that's what you put on your record player so that's how you get it to spin around the thing with singles is that they're a bit strange because while most most of them are ones like this, which is Fanfare for the Common Man by uh, Emerson, Lake and Palmer. The B-side is Brain Solid Surgery, which is an excellent title. It's got the hole in it. It's the same size as the LP one. It obviously looks a bit bigger because the record's smaller, but you get the idea. Some of them, though... Well, this is, a, this is an interesting example. Some of them, you can see... This is uh, uh, my dad's favourite song... I'm sure if he watches this, it'll be very cross and may even put something in the comments. Oh, no. Do you see in the middle? It's kind of got uh, some sort of teeth around the outside. Isn't that strange? Um, it looks almost as if you could pop it out. And indeed, you could pop it out, as somebody has done with this one. You can stick your finger through it. You can stick your nose through it. I really... Oh, you probably didn't hear that. I really don't understand that. You can make a massive hole instead of a small hole. Now, 
what do you do about that? Because you obviously can't put that on the record. And the piece that you need to put it on the record, I've just dropped on the floor, so I'll go and grab that. <sighs> what you'd have to do is go to the record shop, get one of these doodads, stick it in the middle, uh, and it's kind of tricky, but there we go. And now you can play your record. I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> is it some sort of storage thing that you can put them on a big spindle I, I, I don't understand maybe somebody can explain that one in the comments um but yeah something else i'm kind of uh, waffling and pontificating now but this is a really interesting topic to me i like it a lot something else is that hey maybe um this isn't this isn't really a good example because i think this song was really old by the time this particular record came out so let's go with uh Let's go with something that was, um, this This was actually, I think this record was produced in, yeah, 2007, you can tell, it says 2007 there. So this is quite new, um, and I'm actually tempted to keep this one, it's quite nice. Um, let's go, screw it, let's go Brotherhood of Man again. So, let's say you're in the record shop and you fancy... Um, you know, you're out, you're out for something new. You might be like, it's kind of like the um, the Spotify recommended songs thing. You let it play and it might pick out something that you like. Well, in record shops, um, you kind of had that in, in that you could go to the clerk and you could say, hey, I like Led Zeppelin. What can you recommend for me? And they'd hand you a Brotherhood of Man and you'd slap them in the face. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> you go to them and you say, well, you might go to them or you might just flick through the uh, the singles and, oh, that looks interesting. Um, you might talk to your mates and say, oh, actually, that, that was really good. That I quite fancied that. And so you might go to the shop and pick out a, a record. You go into the little booth at the back and you'd stick the single on and you'd be like, ooh, this is quite good. And so an artist that you wanted to dip into for not much money but didn't want to spend your money and time on a full-blown album from them, you could grab a couple of singles instead and, and see if you liked it. And if you did like it, then you could go in for the albums. There were some artists that didn't really bother with albums. I can't name any off the top of my head. Yeah, there were a lot that just didn't bother with albums. Um, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, not a good example because they were, you know, prog band, of course they're into albums. But I don't know, the likes of... Do I have any here, actually, that are more singly? I mean, the Who were quite big on singles, I think. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's go back to the Who. Let's go back to Squeezebox over here. By the way, Success Story is a much better song than Squeezebox, in my opinion. That's the B side. Um, some artists preferred to produce a lot of their music on singles, and to this day, it can be. Um, Certain artists, you can only find specific songs on, like, greatest hits compilations, for instance. Or, um, sometimes they get tacked onto later releases of albums. Uh, particular note, actually, um, I've, I've got rid of it now, where is it? Um, I think it was... No, it wasn't that one. Oh, I'm, I'm losing track. Was it... No? Where's it gone? Oh, there it is. Particularly, this these two tracks actually, uh, "Teacher" and "The Witch's Promise," they were only singles, and so the only way to listen to these was to get a record like this or similar to this. Um, I've got a modern reproduction of this record actually upstairs, and I think it's got an extra song on it, which is also only a single, um, and was later when the albums were re-released on CD and and so on and so forth, they added them onto whichever was the most C appropriate CD for the era that the song was released in. So that's that's quite interesting, but a lot of artists did that and they sort of banked on the singles thing. Other artists did not bother with singles at all, specifically thinking of Led Zeppelin here, who, in the UK at least, they didn't produce a single single uh, because they wanted their music to stand alone and they wanted to... Um, What's the word? They, they were confident enough in their albums that they wanted people to, you know, go in for the album. They didn't want to mess around with singles. Um, and it, it goes to show a kind of um, um, animosity towards the single, seeing it as like this uh, 
non-committal sort of music, but there weren't many artists who did that. And even the likes of ELP, who produced like 20 minute long tracks, on a lot of which are, are kind of impenetrable, <laughs> but that's prog. Um, even they produced singles, but the likes of Led Zeppelin, ooh, we're too good for that. Anyway, that's my tirade on singles. I think it's a, such a fascinating little pocket of uh, of history. One final note on singles. You may come across, in Greatest Hits compilations in particular, you might come across things that say, uh, for example, um, Black or White by Michael Jackson. If you look on the King of Pop um, CD, uh, which is on Spotify as well, it's got Black or White single version. And the main thing about it is that it's a shorter version of the song. Because singles, I think, they at a push you can get like four minutes of music on one of these. Um, more realistically, you're talking three, three and a half minutes. Some of them are a bit shorter. Uh, particularly the older ones, I find, um, sort of 60s-ish. They, they tend to be two, two and a half minutes, not very long at all. Um, so... Sometimes they can be a bit more palatable, like, for instance, ELP's Fanfare for the Common Man. The full version oh, it loses its way after the three minutes, but you listen to the single version and it's a nice, well-rounded piece of music. Just something to keep in mind. Anyway, that could well be one of my longest vlogs, but there we go. I have, mu I have interests that are not video games, would you believe it? So that's all from me. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.